You're listening to Disturbing the Priest with Brandon Baddick. Episode one. It's really nice to be on the mic and finally do this podcast. As you heard, I'm Brandon Baddock, and this podcast is inspired by my radio show here at WMLN, which is my college's radio station. I love doing the show, but the show is coming to an end because I rather not fifth year it here. But this podcast gives me the opportunity to keep talking about my favorite genre of music of all time on like some kind of medium. So it's really nice to continue that into this podcast. I'm looking forward to really like evolve this podcast also, but you got to start somewhere. And that's what we're doing right now. And in celebration of that, I would like to make this first episode about the beginning of heavy metal, the start of my favorite genre of all time. Um, there are a lot of good like starting points and talking about like the evolution of this genre. Like, of course I can start with like caveman music, but a better place to start would probably be the good old American blues, Robert Johnson, one of my favorite blues artists. He's extremely influential when talking about the beginning of heavy metal and rock music. Robert Johnson is one of the craziest stories out there for any musician really so he started out hanging around like blues bars where he would play guitar according to the musicians and people who would hang around the bar he was just terrible like just a awful guitar player and got made fun of by the other artists and and people in the bar but around like 1930 Robert Johnson disappears for three years, then comes back to the bar and got up on stage and played and everybody's jaws dropped because in the time he was gone, he became so good at guitar that today people credit him for like basically laying out the groundwork that became like rock and heavy metal, which is wild. It's so crazy that in fact, people like believe that he sold his soul for being able to play as good as he did and it's interesting because like robert johnson has also like referred to satan in his music and died at 27 which like makes him the first member of the uh 27 club if you're not sure what the 27 club is it's a club of like artists who've all died at 27 kurt cobain's one of them but the rumor is that Robert Johnson went down to the crossroad and met with the devil where he, I guess, pretty much just sold his soul for rock and roll. But England loved the blues and the musicians over there would translate that sound into electric guitar. And this is a good point to point out that a big part in the evolution of heavy metal is technology. The metal sound wasn't there, but like evolved. Cause you know, it like would have been a lot different if like Chuck Berry had like an electric wizard fuzz pedal, <laughs> you know, it was a lot different technology had to keep up, but England used guitar amps to like pretty much just emphasize the heaviness of the blues. Also, this is a good time to quote geezer butler who's the basis of black sabbath where he once said the heaviest genre there is is the blues but chuck berry who used the electric guitar as a lead instrument where it was previously more of a rhythm instrument a great example being 1958's johnny b good along with a few other examples of this being from elvis presley and uh, eddie cochran since we're talking about the 50s, another artist worth bringing up is Link Ray, who invented the power chord. So yeah, pretty big deal. You can really see the blueprints of heavy metal in his music. And I also want to point out his instrumental rumble, which came out in 1958, which was banned actually when it came out because people thought it would insinuate gang violence <laughs> also link ray isn't in the rock and roll hall of fame 
which is blasphemy. But anyway, let's go forward. We're in the 50s, late 50s. Let's uh, go to the 60s now. 1968, we come across the Kinks with their release, You Really Got Me. The song is hard hitting with like distorted chords, which on the side note is like the beginning, like the Kinks, You Really Got Me is kind of like the beginning of proto metal, but that's a whole nother beast for a different episode. But we move further into the 60s, into 1968 with Vanilla Fudge debuting the song, You Keep Me Hanging On. And I'll just say that psychedelic music had a huge impact on the genre, which again, could be its own episode, but I just want to go through kind of the, the main points in the evolution of how we came from the blues into Black Sabbath. But psychedelic music did have a huge impact on the genre. Even that song, You Keep Me Hanging On, has a lot of distortion in it. A lot of psychedelic music like toying with distortion. But let's really move into the, the end of the 60s, where we really get some big names contributing to the genre. So in 1968, the Beatles released the song Helter Skelter which was certainly a stepping stone in creating heavy metal. Paul McCartney felt challenged <laughs> when reading that the Who's new album was branded as the dirtiest, grittiest piece of music there is. And in response, Paul McCartney created Helter Skelter with its intention of outdoing the Who. And we clearly see that. And in my opinion, he did. The song like chugs along with Paul McCartney at times screaming into the mic, which leads us closer to 1970. But before we get there, some other bands we get in 1968 is, uh, is Iron Butterfly with their hit Inagata De Vida, which takes up a whole side of a record and made up of one of the best riffs ever. And also that year we get Blue Cheer, which a lot of people actually point as the first metal band. Blue Cheer with their notable cover of Summertime Blues. And oh my God, Blue Cheer was such a loud and heavy band. Uh, fun fact, they actually had to record their second record outside because it was too loud for the studio. I'll be honest, I really don't know how that works. Before recording this episode, I made sure to Google that and just make sure it was just not something I misremembered because it makes no sense. But yeah, apparently their sound was so loud that they had to record it outside on a, I believe it was like a dock or something they recorded it on, but pretty wild. And we can see bands like really pushing heaviness, really pushing that sound. But the same year, we get Steppenwolf with their debut of the song Born to be Wild, which features the lyric or lyrics, I guess, heavy metal thunder, which is where the term heavy metal comes from. Amazing record. Great psych blues. Such a great like road trip album, Born to be Wild. But right there, boom, we get the name of this genre from Steppenwolf, actually. But I wouldn't necessarily call them metal. Now, let's keep going into 1969. Uh, now we're a year away from what I claim as the birth of the genre. But in 69, we get King Crimson, the progressive rock band with their song 21st Century Schizoid Man. And also we get Led Zeppelin with their first record which contains communication breakdown and good times bad times two extremely heavy songs on a fantastic record but we reached 1970 we started at 1930 we finally made it and this is when we get black sabbath by black sabbath of course some of the songs on black sabbath's record were written and played 
in like 1969, 1968. They did have a band Earth before Black Sabbath. And I believe Wicked World is one of the songs that came out of that band. But Black Sabbath, without a doubt, the first heavy metal band and the first heavy metal album, Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath created the genre. They are not the first band to be heavy, but laid down the themes, aesthetics, and sounds, which, you know, will later be evolved by other bands. But when the album came out, it's not like people like snapped their fingers and pointed and said, hey, look, it's the first heavy metal album. Because at the same time, Black Sabbath and all the bands that sounded similar were referred to as downer rock. Also, though, even the band Coven, which came out a year earlier than Black Sabbath, tackled the same subjects like the occult and Satan. Back in uh, 1969, technically before Sabbath did any of that. But what makes Sabbath the first metal band is because they're one of the first bands to implement heaviness to these kinds of subjects, such as like occult, weed, and Satan to their music, where Coven uses those themes, but Sabbath adds that heaviness to them, making them the first metal band. I like to think about it like this. I'll try to use an analogy which will hopefully like make sense. Listen, the first horror movie wasn't the first movie to depict murder. There were heavy bands before Sabbath, but Sabbath was the first to cement the genre into what we refer to as heavy metal, being Ozzy, Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler, Bill Ward, all had a huge part in creating one of the best sounds known to music. Tony Iommi is especially really cool because of what happened to him and how he overcame it. He worked at a factory and his job was to like push sheets of metal over like a guillotine, which cut the sheets. It was his last day because he wanted to quit and like begin a career around music, which like, you know, I don't blame him. <laughs> If you're working in like a metal factory in Birmingham, I'd, I'd do anything to get out of there. But it's his last day. He comes home for lunch, for like a lunch break, and he tells his mom, he's like, I'm not going back. I'm just going to quit. I don't want to finish my last shift. I just hate it here. But his mom convinces him to go back and like, just finish your shift. It's your last day. So... He goes back, and now he's back at the factory, sliding these sheets of metal into the guillotine. And he must have not been looking or something. In the, he pushed his hands a little too far into uh, where he's not supposed to. And the guillotine comes down and chopped off some of the tips of his fingers. And I can't imagine how upsetting that is to a musician because now you're missing the tips of your playing fingers. Of course, the heavy metal god prevailed and created his own fingertips with bits of his leather jacket, which is why his bends are like so strong. Because he has like no feeling in his playing fingers, which is like one of the most metal things ever. There are also like a lot of really cool Tony Iommi stories, like when they worked with the producer Martin Birch, who was scared of the band because they were rumored to be like Satanists at the time. Uh, so Tony Iommi and Bill Ward thought it would be funny to scare him by covering Bill Ward with rubbing alcohol and lighting him on fire. But what happened was it like soaked into Bill's clothing. So when he was lit, he like went up in a blaze and stayed that way. So he's like rolling on the floor screaming and Tony thinks it's like a part of a, uh, a part of the prank. So he pours more rubbing alcohol on him. And unfortunately Bill got like third degree burns and Tony felt awful about it. But it's just like such a funny story because people always credit Ozzy for being the crazy one. And I find it that people think Tony Iommi is like the voice of reason in the band. 
when the dude like burned his drummer alive. But anyway, you know, I think they'll do it for our debut episode of the podcast. In the future, I'll cover more metal history along with like entire band retrospectives. Album reviews would be cool and like other general opinions on the genre that I'd like to share. Find us on Facebook and Twitter under Disturbing the Priest, a heavy metal podcast. Also, just want to point out one of the main ways I listen to music is on vinyl. So that'll just be like something that'll naturally weave its way into this podcast. But again, I'm Brandon Baddock, and this has been the first edition of Disturbing the Priest. Catch you on the next one. <laughs>